much. I'm uh, Terry Hawkins, a small gray-haired man in a tweed jacket. And uh, I start shuddering uncontrollably, it's because I'm cold. Um, the, uh, the Rage of Achilles is a novelization of the Iliad. And uh, the Iliad itself opens in the ninth year of the Trojan War. Uh, the Greeks had been suffering a terrible plague, which they thought was sent by Apollo to punish Agamemnon, their high king, for stealing the daughter of one of Apollo's priests. Agamemnon gives the girl back, but in order to save face, takes compensation, or that is another girl, from Achilles. And Achilles, predictably enough, is angry. Um, he's been disgraced. So he walks to the beach to get advice from his mother, who is a sea goddess named Thetis. Uh, she does not appear, which makes Achilles even angrier. So he kills everything that he can find that moves, including an octopus about three feet across. And finally he sits in the water, waiting to be swept out to sea. And then this happens. Something thick and wet and rubbery wraps itself around his left leg. Circles of cartilage hard as bone bite into his skin. His eyes pop, pop open as a tentacle thick as his own arm wraps its way up to his groin and tightens hard enough to make him cry out. As though awaiting that signal, the tentacle tightens further and pulls. He jerks forward against submerged sand and his head disappears under water. His mouth, still open, takes in water like a siphon. He claws at air and light. With another yank from the tentacle, his hand submerge as well. The salt water bites his lungs. He flails and panics and coughs, expelling the last of his air in a few pathetic bubbles that race to the shimmering surface and break and are gone. He does not notice that the dark is yet to gather in his eyes, and so he fights, clutching at the sand and rocks speeding below him and kicking at the tentacle. His head snaps forward, lungs and ears full of water, his groan is something he can only feel. He sees that he has been taken by an octopus that must surely be the great-great-grandfather of this afternoon's victim. Fifty feet across, with a head as big as an ox, eyes the size of platters, human as his own, that stare at him with neither pity nor reproach. He thinks that he has offended his mother by killing one of her creatures and knows himself to be a dead man taking the long way to hell. He stops struggling. The octopus descends. The dim light roofing Achilles' new world fades. He wonders whom he will see, whether those he sent there himself will mock him, whether the friends who proceeded will welcome him at whatever tables the dead can keep. Still, the octopus dives. The light, rather than disappearing entirely, seems only to have shifted. Now it comes from below, a hazy point of brightness ahead and down. The octopus flexes and jets and pulses towards the light. They arrive. The tentacle around his leg relaxes, and Achilles drifts down to find a seat on a submerged rock. The octopus flaps once more and is gone. Ahead of him is what looks like a roofless temple, a dozen columns of coral, pink and white, arranged in a circle twenty yards across. Within is the source of light, a ball of lightning that rolls and dances from pillar to pillar. Knowing himself dead, he dares to look directly. Inside the ambient electricity, he sees what seems to be the shadow of a human form. He draws his eyes away. What looked like a temple now seems to be a military camp. Around it circle hundreds of great fish, orderly as cavalry patrols, each bigger than the biggest man, armed with serried ranks of white teeth and festooned with dimly glowing lights, hanging from scalloped lips and fins. On the sand around are ranks of infantry, lobsters as big as hunting dogs, crabs like wild boar. Clams the size of chariot cars snap open and shut in rhythm like Picantes banging their cymbals. Achilles sits and waits. Water seems to nourish a dead man's lungs just as well as air, and now that he has died,